Hello and welcome to episode 83 of Bangin' and Bangin' with Gang Growl. Nikki B over there and Raymond looking suspect <laughs> in that back corner. So, uh, 83, episode 83. It's a lot of episodes. <laughs> I can't even, can I even count that high? <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm not sure I can count that high. But uh, how are you? How are you, Ben? I'm good. You're good? You're over being sick this weekend? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm like, and then keep extending Are you sure? It. You, you got your nasal blast and oh, yeah. all the other stuff yeah. that you had going on? I can finally breathe a little bit better. <laughs> and uh, when, when did you get sick? On Friday the 13th? I actually did. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm not even kidding. I know people are like, oh, okay, here we go. Uh, I was like, no, seriously. <laughs> oh, my goodness. How I'm, was your Friday the 13th? I don't remember, to be honest. <laughs> I, don't, I was all over the place. I was in... Uh, you traveled. I, I, didn't have any, I didn't have any delays Friday. Th- well, I might have been delayed, but just a little tiny bit on the, on, on the plane, like maybe like 20 minutes or something like that. I flew into... Uh, I believe I flew into Chicago on Friday. Yes. Did a show in Chicago. Uh, it was a mixed tag. Uh, not a big fan of mixed tag matches and stuff, but it went all right. And then and, you had another flight where? And then I flew to Detroit the next morning, and and I did a show in Detroit, and then. And then on Sunday you had a Sunday, flight where? Sunday <laughs> I caught a flight to L.A., Los Angeles, and um, I did a show in Los Angeles. And today I'm catching a flight back. Today's Thursday. Uh, to San Diego, but uh, these promoters of San Diego got me frustrated. But uh, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, Sunday. So it was a good weekend. Um, uh, mixed tag on Friday. Uh, Saturday was uh, I believe I was in a singles match. Oh, I was in a singles match with the. Uh, oh, I can't even remember now. <laughs> like, yeah, like the guy was cool though. Whoever it was. It uh, looks like a cool show. Um, you guys did some crazy stuff. You came oh, back with some. Oh, that was Sunday. That was Sunday show. So oh, yeah. I fly all the way out to LA to find out there's no no wrestling ring. Well, there is a wrestling ring. There's two separate shows. They said, well, it's like the red and the blue brand. I'm like SmackDown and Raw. They're like, no, blood and more blood. <laughs> like you know. So it was like death matches. It was Circle Six. So um, so they ran two brands. So outside the bar, it was in a bar in Hollywood in California. Um, they had like death matches. Drake Younger, he used to be a ref in WWE. Remember him? He used, mm-hmm. used to do all these death match. Uh, they had Masato. Uh, they had uh, Matthew Justice. They had all these death match guys, and 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 then uh, yeah, from uh, Game Changer Wrestling, GCW, and all that. There's a few of those guys, Atticus and his brother, and they're out there like between every match. <clears throat> literally, there was three inches or whatever, however much that is, two inches. Was that two inches? Of glass, like just sheer, like just powder oh. being like pushed with a broom out of the ring. These guys are coming back with blood. All their backs are red and bleeding and this and that. I'm like, jeez. So I'm thinking, well, I'm glad I'm not in the ring. But then then the second show starts, and, and it's in the bar, inside the bar, on a bar room floor. There's no ring. It's just, yeah. you're just in a bar brawling. And the, and the guy was like, uh, and I was so tired. And uh I believe there's multiple people on cocaine. I don't know what was going on around there. I'm not going to point any fingers or say anything. But uh, I was really, really tired. One of, the, one of the guys come up and says, hey, you got to try this alpha brain stuff. I'm like, uh, I don't know. I says, is it, is it, is it illegal? You know, he goes, oh, it's the stuff Joe Rogan talks about. Like, yeah. It's supposed to make you dialed in and focus. So. I need to try it. So uh, I'm sitting there and I'm like, and I'm literally just like going, I don't know. I'm wrestling on a bar floor. I got a guy coming up to me, Casanova Valentino out of New York, Brooklyn or somewhere. And uh He's like, well, I'm going to come like a frog brother. You know, the frogs from my Lost Boys, the frog yeah. brothers, the vampire kid. Blah, 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 this. And I'm like, frog this, motherfucker. I'm like, I'm tired. <laughs> so I'm not even listening. But So I took the alpha brain. And like 20 minutes later, he comes back. And I go, I'm going to do it. I go, yeah, you're going to do this. We're going to do that. And he's oh. <laughs> like, I was just so dialed in and so focused that everything made sense all of a sudden. And uh, I don't know what's in it. Um I had somebody look it up, and uh, they said it's safe. It looks safe and everything. Everything looks legal and legit or whatever. But <laughs> man, I was dialed in and focused. Like, he, he told me what he wanted to do. I remembered it one take around. You know, he wanted to go over it a few, a few times, a bunch of times. I was like, I'm good, man. I'm good. <laughs> like, I was, like, totally but felt like I was when I was 17 when I first started. I could remember, like freaking Yettysburg address or whatever <laughs> yeah oh, I could wow. recite I, I could recite whatever I was the kind of guy if you give me three pages of paper to read I could tell you if you ask me within that 10 minutes I could tell you back that three pages of paper you ask me an hour later forget about it but if I was to read That's something or do now. something I can I'm <laughs> dialed in on it and but lately I haven't been able to remember anything I, uh, what episode we're on this that my weekend where I've been but I took that and I was like really uh, really super focused so it got me through that show and then 
I was literally back in the hotel room for an hour, showered, washed all the blood off, and uh, I mean, it was like crucifixing. My my hand still got uh, still bruised from hitting it, uh, oh, the wood skewers into his forehead. He's running around with the cross on his head, and he holy waterboarded me. I don't know. It was on I, you saw that on yeah, Twitter where they were pouring it in there. <laughs> but I kept looking, going when they were racing my hand when I when I won the match and all that. I go, why am why is there blood there? So I'm over here. <laughs> Uh, after I seen that yesterday, I was feeling around. I go, oh man, I got a cut on my arm, back, my shoulder back. You can't see it because it's in a tattoo, but it's a, like a razor cut through there. Oh, so I was bleeding there, and I'm going, I hope that was mine. <laughs> like, I don't know where I got that. Some fan cut me in the crowd because they were like crazy. Like it was like a that bar was kind of like a you know what a, you know what a chola is. Like the, the Mexican girls and Chola, they're like oh, yeah, Chola, yeah. Oh, and a Cholo, yes. Chola. It's like that yeah, kind of a Chola, punk rock gotcha. bar. So it's really gotcha. interesting punk rock bar. Like a mosh pit kind of. Yeah, and it was really, it was really cool. And, and uh, I'm thinking, like, man, did somebody cut me in there? <laughs> you know, I don't I know. Hope not. But they were like great fans, and it was, it was, a, it was, a, it turned out to be a good time. But um, back to the hotel room for an hour, and jump back on a flight home here. I was gonna teach class Monday, but I just didn't make it. Uh, I got in the house and said I can't yeah. do it, and I went to sleep. But I got through Mon- uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, and here it is Thursday. I got to get this done, and I'm jumping back on the plane to San Diego. Now these guys are interesting characters. They, 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 they got me staying somewhere 90 minutes away from San Diego Airport. Which, whatever, I get it because one show's 30 minutes from there, and the other show's an hour the other way from there. But on the last day, I'm literally like, I looked at it. This is 19 minutes from San Diego International Airport, but they're gonna have me drive an hour and a half back to this place. And stay in a room two hours to get up and drive an hour and a half back to the San Diego airport. I might have to pull an audible, put my stuff in the things. I said, no, you guys are dropping me off. I'm going to get my own hotel over here in San Diego. Because, you know, yeah. that's three hours I could be sitting in a hotel, uh, relaxing before I get on another flight to fly all the way back home here. And uh, yeah. get right back into the groove here just to go back out on Friday morning. And once I'm out on Friday morning, it's, it's grinding. I'll come back home Halloween. And then, because uh, I got shows uh, that Saturday, Sunday... Whatever I'm back Halloween and I'm back out to uh, Denmark on that Wednesday, so, so cool. um, Copenhagen. So, That's so cool. another international, another flight, another way. <laughs> but I'm blessed, you know. I'm grinding, doing what I do, loving it. So you didn't you didn't wrestle anywhere this weekend? No school training, no nothing, not nothing. Just chill or what? No, I I actually well there wasn't any shows this past weekend, um, but. I saw you on Tuesday. <laughs> That's pretty much so, it. Saw me on Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> saw you on Tuesday. Um, did you I, did you pick your weapon up yet? Uh, you know, you're waiting for this. When do you pick it Sunday. up? Sunday. I'm Sunday. going Sunday. I'm not going to give you any advice, but I would stay away from that crazy girl that you that want to go shoot me. <laughs> I don't know about her. So some, <clears throat> some, something's going on there. <laughs> like, Something. You know, use your own judgment. You do what you got to do. But, Absolutely. All okay. right. So, um, yeah, but that was my weekend, and my week's coming up. It's a little crazy. I got my Bigfoot shirt on today, though. Nice. Hide and seek champions. Undefeated. Hide is, undefeated. Hide Can't and seek give champions. Can't the undefeated yeah. <laughs> champions. Um, and, you know, I know we were talking about Friday the 13th, and, um, and you know, Halloween's coming and, and stuff like that. But I, I was telling you earlier this morning, and I'll, I'll tell this here. So I, I was walking the dog about 6 a.m. this morning, and uh, it's still dark out, right? So the dog is really, it's a weirdo of a dog. It does its business and stuff, and it takes its last poop and everything. And it, it knows when we're going back in. So I don't know why it does it with me, but this, she's a female. Her name's Tina, the dog. And uh, <laughs> she'll stop, and it's not a gland thing, but she always, like, wants to wipe her butt before she goes back upstairs. So she does that boot scoot boogie across the grass, you know? <laughs> so she sits down and does that. And I'm used to her doing it. I'm like, all right, do your thing. We're going to head up. Because she does it right before we head up. It's like, all right, we're going up. Let me clean my junk, you know, whatever she's yeah. doing. Whatever goes on in her little dog mind. And uh, and she's doing that. And I'm looking at her. And I'm thinking she's looking at me, looking at her. And she just stops. And it looks over my shoulder. And I'm like, what are you looking at? And then when I turned... I promise you there was a shadow standing right next to me, like a person shadow, like like a long slender shadow. And I freaked Jeez. out. The hairs went up on me, the dogs looking. And uh, then I looked and it was gone. And then I see my shadow back behind me this direction. But this shadow was like right here and it went that way. I was like, this is out here. And it's uh, it's in Hollywood. I, I live right in Hollywood. It's right where the golf course is there. They're going to build a clubhouse there. And there's all these trees in there. But man, I don't know what... Uh, I was freaked out this morning. It's been a long time since we we're always talking about spirits and things we've seen, or, or not always, but we mentioned it here and there. And, uh, so scary. So it's been, but it's been a minute since I've been uh, spooked or felt something, and I was like, oh, this morning it was like uh, the hairs were up everywhere, back of my neck. I was like, ah, 
Mm-hmm. All right, we're going to head upstairs and go to the gym. You know, gave yeah. me a, I didn't need any energy or coffee to get to the gym there. I had that a little extra. Up. <laughs> I got woke me up and had, my, had me going a little bit. But oh, I was God. like, man, maybe cool. I should stop talking about this stuff on the show. Maybe I'm opening uh, a portal. Like a, maybe I'm like a Ouija board <laughs> opening shit up here to come from mess with me. You know? <laughs> God, no. But, uh, I mean, the dog's always spooked over there. I, that dog never likes that. It, it's okay in that corner, and there's times it's just like... You know, it's like, ah. My dog does that. It'll be like yeah. dead silent in the night, and then he'll like look into a corner of the room and start barking, and I'm like, don't do that. Like, stop that right and, now. And, and the other thing I'm that went, went on out. this morning, too, and I didn't realize it until you just said dead silence, right? So oh God. when I came out, out, it was like birds are chirping, you know, morning's coming, might as well had a Bob Marley song on. And when we were coming back in over there, it was complete silence. There wasn't a bird chirping or anything. And this is it's all bushes and woods. So they would be chirping all through there. It's a beautiful golf course, right? And mm. and nothing was chirping and it was dead quiet. I didn't even think about that tonight either. And I, that was that's kinda that should have been a sign. It was spooky. But I, I was freaked out a little bit. Like, I haven't been tripped out like that in a while. I was like, woo, maybe I need alpha brain. I'm gonna get folks to you. <laughs> <laughs> but I did order some of the alpha brain, so I'm gonna see what happens. I'll let you know if it works out. Yeah, or I'll give you two to try. You can try. Take two. See if you like it. it. Then you order. I'll give Raymond. Yeah. Raymond gave me some drink. He's trying to poison me. I, I'm not here to promote it. But he tried to give me, get me high on mushrooms or something. Or something. You ever had that? <laughs> He yeah, said it's going to give me energy and I've tried dial me coffee. in. I don't think it Guess what? It did not. <laughs> it did not give me energy. If anything, I seem more scattered minded. Anyway. <laughs> what are you trying to do? Because I'm all sabotage? over the place. I don't know. Is he I, trying to sabotage I, you? I think he was maybe, I don't know. I think when I get on, when I leave here to go to the airport, I'll be tripping balls at Miami International. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah, mushroom elixir, man. I can't get through security. My, 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 sh- seeing sorry. shadows, all right. Oh my I was God. already seeing shadows this morning. I don't need any extra help. <laughs> but like, Jesus. You know, like, That's so scary. But that was, it was really scary. It was like a tall like thing, you know. But it was just gone. It was like it ran away. It was like, what? So I thought, was that a floaty out the corner of my eye? But it was like a whole shadow like me. And then I looked over and I saw my shadow back here. But I mean, it just the, the mm. hairs raised up on me, and it, but it was the dog was looking over me at it, like the dog seen it first, cause I was like, what are you looking yeah, at? Dog cause it, it was doing the boot scoop boogie, right? And it went, mm. <laughs> I just thought I was looking up, I'm like, what are you looking at? I thought it was like looking at me, looking at her, like going, like, hey, give me some privacy or something, yeah, you know? No. But but then I looked and I seen the thing and it was gone. I was like, whoa, I was, I was tripped out there. Yeah. I don't fucking be walking her no more. It might be her mom's job now. <laughs> well, it always was her job. I just filled in this morning because I was up. Aww. I was like, I'll take her. She was still at a gym, so I said, oh, I'll take the dog for a walk. And now nice Susan, gesture. I don't think out. Susan walks the dog that way. She goes out the other door. I might have to start going out the other door and go the other way. Yeah. <laughs> we'll avoid that spot for now. I was a little creeped out. I just, I don't know. I was bothered all yeah, I don't, I don't mess with spirits. I don't want to see them. I don't want to deal with them. Uh, we're messing with it. It's it messing with me. <laughs> like, I don't know what was going on. It was just something. Was like, what's up? I want to let you know I'm here or something. Oh, I don't know. Whoa. I'll start but, uh, swinging. Uh, <laughs> I don't think they don't do much, but <laughs> so uh, I, I see Raymond has notes up here, but I have no idea what that is. And um, I, I saw a, a Billy Corgan NWA thing. Uh, I didn't click on it today or read it. Did you see any of that? I did not. Well, obviously Raymond has because he has a whole thing written out over here about it. <laughs> but uh, I don't know if you want to pick it up from here and go because you have a better uh, reading voice <laughs> and you sound a lot better reading than I do. All right now, my voice is still a little deep, so I sound like a man, but it's all good. Well, you don't look like a man, I can tell you that. <laughs> good. <laughs> good. That's half the battle. I notice that your hair is different, and, and you got a different type of top on today. Your eyelashes are different. Yeah, you got a lot just, of things going on today. You got a lot going on today. Yeah, yeah. It's it's like, like, hair takes way it, too long, and the it's girls like, know uh, it's just, yeah, too yeah. long, especially when it's curly like this. Yeah, it takes well, soon you'll long. have your weapon. You'll have your stalker <laughs> repellent there. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> like, but I don't think you're going to repel them with this look. No, speaking of stalker. Stalker. He stroke again yesterday. Oh, sh- stroke again? <laughs> no, like was he literally. No, I mean was probably, he probably. Probably, but uh, no, he actually ended up reaching back to my company, trying to get his contracts reinstated, and he took my voice from different videos because obviously I have videos out there. Obviously, I'm here, and with AI, he took my voice and was saying some crazy stuff like, "Oh, I love you," and his name, and then something about my belongs to you but you can tell us something AI. about your what your cooch hat yeah whoa <laughs> the the you know in your own voice in, in my own... voice it sounds like me oh 
It sounds like, and it's so creepy, but you can tell it's AI, so I mean... Is this why the F- FBI was involved or something? Yeah, so I, I spoke to an FBI agent yesterday, and mm. I may have to go to Vegas next week, actually, to do something. Oh, I think I'd rather deal with my weird shadow that came out of nowhere. <laughs> than a real psychotic <laughs> than, than, person. Than an actual yeah. physical living being that thinks like that. Or is sophisticated enough to do that kind of stuff, too. Yeah. Or twisted enough to do that kind of stuff. So. Yeah, so That's it's pretty scary. scary. Mm. It is scary. And the fact that AI can do that. Do you want Raymond like... to come stay with you over there? <laughs> okay. He'll watch your dogs and everything. <laughs> you just sit over there and edit it. But he's going to Germany or Berlin. Berlin. He's oh, going okay. to Berlin, yeah. Nice. I've never been to I think Germany. you're in for a shock really in Berlin. I've been to Hanover and, and, and uh, Bremen and all these other places, but Berlin, I don't know. I, I'm just I don't landing know. there, though. You're just landing in Berlin? When I get there, I'm going to catch a train to Munich. Where all the, like, Munich. Yeah. <clears throat> that's awesome, yeah. I'm, I really want to go there, especially for Oktoberfest. I think like that's one of the things you have to do before you die type thing. I don't like beer. <laughs> I don't even like beer. That's a funny thing. I just exactly. feel like I'm like the shoots and plats. They call it right? the shoots and plats, the carnivals yeah. and the festivals. Like I think stuff. that that would be cool. I mean, and, I, like I said, I don't even like beer, but and, I just um, want to go. Otto Wands is a wrestler called Otto Wands. He liked all the big heavyweight guys. I could never get booked over there, but they would do these shows that uh, they would last like three months, and they would wrestle in the same building every night at the, the, these festivals and the shoots and plants. And um, uh, I was on the Christmas card. I was on rotation. I don't think I was quite big enough to get over there. But then after he passed and somebody else picked the company up, I was able to get over there. But they went from three months to like a month, you know. So I would do a month where you wrestle in the same building every night. And it's, it's incredible, Germany and the fans. And it's a really great experience. I think you'll enjoy I'm it. Dying it to go. Uh, yeah. It's beautiful there. Uh, the culture, you know, it's good. And food is great if you like that food. The beer is beer will catch you off guard. Uh, you know, it's, I think it's a bit stronger in, yeah. in uh, volume and stuff like that. So, yeah. But I think you'll enjoy it. Raymond, I think you'll enjoy it, too. You going by yourself? I do like that great You might not here. come back. You ever see the movie Hostel? <laughs> where, are you staying in a hostel? I don't know where I'm staying yet. You don't know where you're staying at? You got a trip planned? You don't know where you're going to stay yet? So I'm going to be like, everywhere. So I don't want to book. You're just gonna roll up and be like, ah, oh, can I get a room? And they're gonna do shit and like, blah, 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 some shit in Germany. And you'll be like, well, yeah. I'm, but, I'm too much of a control freak for that. Yeah, I know. I have to have organization. Oh, I gotta know. I gotta out. know if the Uber's running or if tax, the shuttle at the airport. <laughs> I gotta know everything. Yeah. Definitely, I'm not gonna go without a room if I, all these other things. I'm already pissed off about these guys got me staying too far away. That's how, and if you think I'm a control freak, Susan's even more so on my own schedule. Like, like oh why are you doing that? I'm like, I didn't tell these guys that. They're, yeah, so you're just going to go over there and like free ball it or whatever you want to call it. Wow, uh, well, not free ball it. Uh, well, you might. I, I don't know. You might. You might. You run out of underwear because you didn't pack right because you just went wildly and recklessly out you're there. Just like going like this on the sink. You're getting six P. You remember the six P's, right? Yeah, but this is a Proper place. planning prevents piss poor performance. Not having a hotel room, I'm thinking you're going to have a piss poor performance. <laughs> you're going to get over there and it's some kind of festival or some biker rally in town or some whatever uh, Dutch Mark reunion. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe Backstreet Boys would be playing over there. Not Backseat, Backstreet Boys. <laughs> Backseats were wrestlers, but that, uh, oh, Trent Acid and uh, Johnny Cashmere. Rest in peace, Trent Acid. But, uh, yeah. but Johnny Cashmere, he's got a new group called another Backseat Boys again, but uh, very interesting tag team. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, Raymond, I wish you luck. What were you going to say? I cut you off 12 no, times. I'll, I'll know by this weekend, kind of. Uh, I should hope so. You leave in a week. Early Monday. <laughs> I could never. <laughs> I mean, I say that, and at the same time, I'm like a huge procrastinator, but only in the States. If I'm traveling international, there's no way. To be fair, if you do get stuck, they have train stations all over, and I, upon many occasions over there, see people drinking all through the night and all throughout the day sitting outside the train station. So you'll be all right. <laughs> Just get you a 40, sit back on the curb, and... Let it roll. Let the good times roll. <laughs> I get a phone charger. Maybe adapter. bring a sleeping bag. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Phone charger adapter. Yeah, I'm gonna get you that power thing. pack. Yeah, so that and a sleeping bag. Just where your head lays is home. There you go. Thanks. Like a Rolling Stone. <laughs> Papa was a Rolling Stone. Hmm? Thanks for the advice. Of course. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and uh, oh, another thing, bring <clears throat> Ziploc bags, right? So. 
if you do stay at a hotel or you can sneak in a hotel, you get the, they, they serve more. The, the, the breakfast is more like a, a lunch. They have a lot of breads and cheeses and meats for breakfast, right? So you take the Ziploc bag and you just like load it all up and you make little mini sandwiches for the rest of the day. It's off the breakfast thing. So you all right. <laughs> Smart. <laughs> like, Smart. You, you put it in a Ziploc, you're like, yeah, and then you got a little lunch and dinner, you know, because their breakfast is like lunch and dinner. Uh, to me, it is all the lunch meats and stuff and cheeses and stuff. You can survive like that. So you just slide in, take your Ziploc, fill it all up, use the restroom, wash your, brush your teeth. Get out and go back and sit there with your forty on the at the, at the train station. <laughs> like, I'm, a, I'm about to be a refugee. Well, <laughs> I'm what I'm worried about is if you ever seen American Werewolf in London, even though you're in Germany, but uh, you know the werewolves got them. You're gonna be out there with nowhere to stay. You're gonna either end up strapped down like in the movie Hostel and being tortured, oh getting your eye blow torched out. Like it is Halloween time, you know. Like, yeah. like you're just you're gonna wake up strapped down to a bed. <laughs> It won't be Dexter getting you. It'll just be some dude that paid hundreds of thousands of dollars just to torture you to death or something Jeez. over there. The movie, you, you ever seen Hostel? I'm not a scary movie person, but I'll get the gist of, like, the movie. I just can't. They just, yeah. I physically cannot sit in a scary movie and, like, be okay with myself afterwards. <laughs> like, I... Well, it was the opposite of, like, well, it's not the opposite, but, like, Liam Nielsen, whatever his <clears throat> name is, all the takings, you know how mm-hmm. they would take them, but they turn them into, like, prostitutes. Hostel, they just strap you down and some really rich person paid to kill you however they want to kill you torture you yeah, or whatever. Yeah, I you don't know. want to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. That kept, that movie, <laughs> The that last movie, scary, movie I, scary movie I saw was like Saw 2 or 3 and three then after that I was five. like... They got another one coming out. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, or Saw 5, yeah, that was the last one. Yeah. Or like The Hills Have Eyes, like I just, after that I'm uh, like, I'm done. Can't be messed with The Hills Have Eyes and Wrong Turns when that mongoloid was raping the girl. Oh my like, God. Oh my goodness. Oh and they were in that God. camper and it's like, ah, ah, ah. I was like, I was like, oh, No, shit. and then I went hiking in Sedona, Arizona and I don't know what it was but I just, I'm just like, someone's gonna come out of a cave or something. Like, it was so oh, scary. Oh, because of The, the, the yeah, Hills Have Eyes. Was, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm like, I'm good. I can live without watching scary movies. You ever see The Wrong Turns? No. Where they would like be out through West Virginia and they like blow a tire out on the car. They would set West a little trap. West scary And they would already. haunt them and they'd run through the trees and then they'd chop them up and eat them and shit. You know? Yeah, you won't find me really watching that. No. I mean, I think it gives West Virginia a, wrong, no. uh, a kind of a bad name. Like uh, West Virginia is very beautiful, West Virginia. I think it's very beautiful. It's right on the border of... Uh, Pittsburgh and everything else. It's very beautiful up there, but I don't think everybody in West Virginia runs around eating people and stuff. They just give it kind of a bad rap, I think. I don't think it's they a hard think working they eat coal people. mining country. Yes, they have like Appalachian magic and stuff like that. You know, what there's people Apple, like the I don't want to say it's like voodoo. It's not voodoo, but like mountain magic. You know, the, the kind of like witches. Oh, yeah. and, well, I don't know nothing about that. I watched today. Did you? What you say? <laughs> like, oh like, no! Uh, no, just like, uh, like you know, I don't know. Uh, they can put spells on you. They they make their own soaps. It's kind of like witches, you know. Kind of. Uh, forget I said anything bad about West Virginia. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Appalachians. Me. Yeah, Appalachians. It's ignorance. It's a, it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. But a lot of people disappear on that Appalachian Trail. You heard of, you know. I like, have seen that. And it's crazy because I saw a map where it, said, like, it shows all the different caves and stuff that they have in National Forest. And then right next to it, it's like all the disappearances that have happened in the U.S. in the last 10 years. And it's literally around the same area. Oh, man. That's what I'm saying. It's so scary. You've seen that? Maybe you should just go hike the Appalachian it's Trail, so Raven. Scary. Give me some ideas. No, my uh, math uh-uh. teacher from high school I used to do that go. every year. He used to hike the Appalachian Trail. I wouldn't go by myself. I'd have to be in a big group. Um, <clears throat> I'd want to do it in a group. I think people that go randomly to or one, they, they disappear. I think. Yeah, I'm like, it's always somebody by themselves. Like, why would you go by yourself? Like, you want peace of mind. You want to get away from it. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> but even. Groups, two people disappear, right? Like, yeah. Yeah. Now you want to go in a group four. of five, I think. Group of five might be some. What are the gun laws there? I don't know. It's in the Appalachians. You got, everybody probably has a gun. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, who knows what it is? I don't think it's people grabbing people. I think it's just shit in the wilderness out there. <laughs> like, no, there's stuff kind going of on out there. Different being or entity. Bigfoot. Yeah, big, no, Bigfoot's innocent, man. <laughs> like, like, Bigfoot. Bigfoot's harmless <laughs> all right well, before we get too drug on to the bigfoots and stuff but uh you, the you origins wanna... of halloween oh what we just lost the nwa stuff what happened we just, all right so okay origins are oh, of... we running out of time no yes no but uh what happened to the nwa you didn't want to do the nwa oh, okay. 
No, no, I didn't know. I'll do some wrestling before we get all like, uh, we'll finish up. <laughs> so, uh, NWA signs two TV deals with the CW. The NWA has reportedly signed two television deals with the CW network. The deals cover two different NWA products that are slated to air. Is that slated? <laughs> yeah, that are slated to air on the CW. Um, NWA Power and a reality TV show. This reality show is expected to delve into the day to day behind the scenes operations of the NWA. The announcement regarding the, these television deals came from um, Billy, who, te- what was it, teased? Sorry, this is like font, it's like not working for me. Who teased this development in a recent interview mentioning that an official announcement would be coming relatively soon. So question for you is, was last that, week- Was that the official announcement then? I guess it's here, so they signed, okay. All a right. TV, or right. reality TV, that's kinda cool. Um, last week you spoke about competition and wrestling being good for the business. EC3 reportedly stated he'd like to defend his NWA World Heavyweight Championship against Brian Dan- um, Danielson, who's currently signed to AEW, which will make that crossover match since EC3 is signed to NWA. Is that a question? Wait, wait. he's not signed <laughs> to NWA, EC3. <clears throat> He signed to AEW. Uh, EC- no, he's in the NWA. He's the NWA champion. All right, I'm sorry. Brian Daniels is in AEW. Yeah. Okay, so what's your opinion on wrestling promotions doing crossover matches and uh, that come back to territory days of wrestling? Um, territory. Opinion of territory days of wrestling. Um, I have no idea what this reality show is. I mean, but Ruthie J will be wanting to come back on here again. Obviously, she'll be like, I want a reality show now. And so it uh, looks like she's falling into a good spot at a good time. Um. I, I don't know uh, anything about this, so I, get, I, like, I guess it was a surprise thing. Um, crossover promotions, uh, you know, it, it was the old territory days like NWA. That was all cool. That worked. You had one world champion. He went around and defended in a different small, the, 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 the other regional territories and stuff like that that were all under the NWA uh, banner. Um, I think things are too wild, wild. Uh, everybody's too particular now. And, um, and, uh, I mean, I think it could work, yes, um, but not with AEW. I don't know. Uh, I think uh, I, I don't know. <laughs> he, I, you thought he? I, yeah, I don't think it would work with a. I, I think there's two. What am I trying to say here? I, I don't. I, I don't think Tony. I don't know. I don't think it would work. I, I think they're two trying to beat their own path and stuff. That they'd go back to to try to work with <clears> NWA <throat> and do that. But I mean, he bought Ring of Honor and he's doing Ring of Honor stuff. But and uh, they may work with like New Japan or something here and there. But I, I don't know. I, I don't think it, I don't think that would work. I think NWA. Uh, I think it's cool that they're on the CW network. That's like what, like Channel Thirty Nine or something like that. Yeah. I don't know if that's where it is everywhere, but it's CW. It's a, it's a good network. It's a main. Yeah. It's a it's a television. It's not YouTube and stuff like that. Yeah. So that's cool. Um, reality. Reality show, I, I don't know. They got a lot of different characters there, so it could be interesting. Um, uh, old, old Pat will be, uh, he'll be busy there. <laughs> I don't know if that's going to work out for him. They'll keep him super busy. Yeah, I don't, I don't really know what to say. It's interesting. It seems I'm excited for, for them that they found something because it felt like they were kind of sputtering and spending a lot of money just doing these, uh, they would tape like, these long amount uh, <clears throat> weekly they tape supposed to be weekly shows but they tape them with like in a, uh, like four weeks of shows and, and like one day yeah. or, or or even even eight weeks of shows in one day or something or two days so um, I think that's cool that they've got some backing if they, if they are being backed or I don't know if, I don't think Billy Corgan probably paid for it or not so I, that, I'm sure they approached him so I don't know it's interesting I don't know much about it um, I just saw it this morning. I didn't read it. This is the most I've read about it, so I didn't click <laughs> on it. So I don't really have much to say, but well, that's cool. <clears throat> what do you think? I, I just like I guess I haven't seen many, you know, different organizations like coming together for like a different show. It's usually like each one has their own thing kinda of going on. Yeah. So it would be interesting to see some kind of like merge between the two, but I mean, I know NWA is willing to work with people, but is a the question is is AEW yeah, willing to work with them? Would AEW <laughs> look like oh we're going backwards to work with NWA and we're helping NWA? I mean, it's how they would look at it. I guess that's what I was trying to say. I'm sure NWA they I know that they're willing to to work with people and do different things, but um, uh, but who knows? Uh, I don't know. I I thought I saw something on CCW. Uh, was gonna have some stuff on Rampage or something, so I, I don't know. I don't even know what that yeah. was. So I have no idea. Mm-hmm. So I could just be 
talking shit and out of my ass because I don't know anything right now. <laughs> so go. I'm just as clueless. I'm better off talking about Bigfoot or the Nephilims and, and uh, <laughs> uh, UFOs and, and uh, Sky, uh, uh, Skinwalker Ranch or something and, and, oh, and, and all this stuff like this. But but good luck to uh, NWA. A lot, there are a lot of great guys there. They wanted me to come do that October show, the Sam Haim show. Um, the one Ruthie's on and she's got her title oh, shot nice. that she's going after the title. But I was already booked in Philadelphia, ECW, ECW arena, not, not EC3, ECW <laughs> arena. I like, you know, get EC3 on the mind. <clears throat> but, um, but no, I'm excited for NWA and, uh, and, and it's always good to have more. So if they have exposure, that means even if it's a reality show, then it still means they can run more wrestling shows and it just gives more opportunities for the young women and uh, men that I'm training to have somewhere to go wrestle. So it's all good. I think it's all great. That's all tremendous. That's awesome. Um, there's another question. With the NWA's reality TV show providing behind the scenes look into the wrestling business, do you think this transparency could negatively affect the way wrestling is perceived? No. Uh, not now. It's, a, it's everybody knows it's entertainment now. <laughs> like, I mean, Al Snow's Ohio Valley's got a show on Netflix. The wrestler, wrestler, or whatever it's called. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, I mean, back in the day when it was Beyond the Mat or something like that, it, maybe that would re re reflect it and expose things a little earlier than people want it. But uh, no, they clearly know it's all bullshit now. <laughs> like you read about it every week. There's uh, the social medias and and uh, all the. Uh, all the media outlets and yeah. stuff like that. There's nothing, there's no smoke and mirrors anymore. It'd be, it'd be great if somebody can actually pull things off without people knowing and stuff like that. So what they're doing, I have no idea what they're doing in reality. I don't know if it's them trying to get buildings or if it's something like Al Snow in Ohio Valley. So will it look like they're just copying them? But that was a Netflix thing. This is an actual uh, TV thing. I don't know how they weigh out against each other. They're both very cool, but both happy for both. I'm friends with Al. I love Al. He's a smart He's, he's a genius. He, he truly understands wrestling inside and out. Um, so I don't know. It'd be very very interesting because you got a dude that's done. He was the voice of the '90s and rock and roll. The world is a vampire. Yeah. You know, smashing pumpkins, pumpkins, uh, pumpkins, <laughs> pumpkins, <laughs> smashing pumpkins. Is he got a rock guy running a wrestling thing? So. Uh, I picture him being a lot like Billy Billy Corgan, being a lot like Tony Khan. <laughs> like he just he goes to sleep. He goes to sleep. And wakes up the next morning and goes, I'm going to do this. <laughs> like, <laughs> Tony Khan probably goes to, does his thing and wake up, nah, I feel like doing this. Like, Why do we got to follow the regular rules of professional yeah, standard, wrestling? Yeah. Well, do what we want. Beat our own path. Make our own way. And, and, and create new shit, you know? So it, it might be very interesting an aspect to see how his mind works. Because he's a very interesting person. He's very cool. I've had lunch with him a couple times. And... Very kind, uh, very giving, very smart, but very eccentric at the same time, you know. So so I think it would be really cool because it might be more on how his mind works and how he deals with wrestlers and how he perceives things. So it might be a very cool, uh, different outlook on, on wrestling and stuff. So it might be very cool. It might be very cool. So, no, that'd be cool to see. You know what I mean? mean? To see how his mind works and what he's really yeah. thinking, you know, and how, like, <clears throat> you know how Ruthie J said when he's here, he goes, you're here in this locker room because I know you're here and I want you to be here. So... That that was a glimpse of how he's thinking. Like so, he lets them know that he wants them there, and that's why they're there. So maybe the show will give you a whole lot more um, insight too. and look and background. Yeah, and so. also like for people, even like myself, for example, getting into it, um, you know, it kind of gives you a perspective of like what they're looking for, really, like how they, how the day to day looks like, as far as like what yeah. what they want you to be doing. I mean, obviously, they're not going to tell you everything right. on TV, but. <laughs> It gives you a good idea of like uh, what what happens. Yeah, I'm very old there. school, so I'm much like on that like that WWE programming. I'm like uh, this WrestleMania is ending, but due to how this is ending and everything, I'm already building for the next WrestleMania. I kind of know where mm -hmm. I'm going to go by this pay per view, or I'm going to where I'm or bringing this guy in, and he's going to be slowly elevated here. And I kind of have all these directions where I think they literally just wake up and go, well. <laughs> Why not? Today's, today's <laughs> like, a great day to do this. You know, yeah. You know, it's raining out. Makes I feel sense. a little dark. Let's push a. <laughs> let's just push a like vampire character or something. You know, I, I don't. I don't know. I, I. Oh, they think they see things differently. The creative. The mind. I think your musician's mind is very differently creative. You know. The, uh, so I. I, I yeah. Now I can't speak on Tony Khan's. I, I don't know what he thinks. He, he's, but he probably feels like 
why adapt and do everything the way it's been like why out with the old and in with the new so you yeah. know so that, he might have that type of thinking and, and he may have a very uh, artist like type of thinking you know and but he loves wrestling so the same like tony khan loved wrestling <clears throat> so it takes that and evolve so um they might not stick to year-long programs going this direction they see something they like and they're like why not so it'd be very interesting to see how that works and how his, how his mind works if that's what if he's evolved heavily in it i'd want to watch it if it was just the wrestling part of it no i wouldn't want to watch it but if they're covering how billy corrigan thinks and how he looks at stuff and yeah. his hands-on day-to-day things then i would want to watch it i mean and i'm not knocking it because it's wrestling i just i didn't even watch the i love al snow i didn't even watch the ohio valley thing because i just I see so much wrestling. I can't even keep track of the wrestling shows. And, and I don't it's even know why I do a there. podcast because I don't even have time to do this shit. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't come on here and I can't even talk about wrestling because I just can't get it. I don't even have time to watch it all because I'm still <laughs> too busy trying to be a wrestler or, or hold on to what little bit of wrestling I have in my life, you know. Um, you know, so. And I, Very you get to learn a lot about your experience. So that's cool. I think yeah. that's why the majority of people even listen in. They just want to know. <laughs> Like, what was it like? We all want to know. Give us all the sauce. Ah, the fans that listen to this show, they're very kind people. They're, 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 yeah, we have some God tier fans on here. Yeah. Uh-huh, <laughs> God tier level fans. Go. <laughs> I it. love that. <laughs> I never even heard of that before until that time. But Not all right, either. I guess we're uh, moving on to Halloween here. In, uh, Origins of Halloween. I, don't I know can't the, say that name. Sam Hain. Sam Hain. Mark the end of harvest season and the onset of winter for the the Celts. Oh, Celts. That's yeah. a C. Okay. Like the Celtics. <laughs> yeah. It's believed that the veil between the living and the dead was thinnest during thinnest. that time, <laughs> allowing spirits to cross over. Bonfires were a significant part of Samhain celebrations, believed to possess protective and cleansing powers. And people often set places at their tables for deceased loved ones and left offerings of food and drink for wandering spirits. Hmm. Question for you is, where does your belief stand when it comes to origins like this? Do you believe in spirits? I think we were just talking about this. Spirit ghosts and any other supernatural being exists. <laughs> so, uh, well, I don't think this... <clears throat> so, uh, where, where does my belief stand in origins like this? Like, well, I'm at a crossroads because I, I go... I'm starting to think... Um, you know, especially after going back to California and Holly Hell over there, <laughs> Hollywood. Oh, I'm like, gosh. I'm thinking, like, is the world really coming to an end? Like, uh, just debauchery and sin, and, and if, if you're any type of, you know, I'm a God person. I'm not so much of a church religious person, but I'm, I'm a Same. God. I believe in God, right? So, um, so uh, uh, if this is the celebration of like, uh, and when the uh, they're celebrating in, in, in a sense evil, right? And <laughs> in the, in the, in the, the darker spirits and you know, the the thin layer there that they can cross over into different each other's worlds and stuff. Right? Is it a good thing to be celebrating, or, or, or are you overthinking it? You know, are, are you are you celebrating evil and uh, the the devil itself, uh, as in a sense of Halloween? Are you portraying yeah. that? Or uh, I mean, that's not the question you asked me, but you asked me one of my beliefs on this, like so on this origins like this. So and I'm at a crossroads because I never thought of it like, no, Halloween's Halloween. Yeah. Halloween's cool. You go out, woogie 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 woogie. Mm-hmm. You know, you know. <laughs> If you put a ghost thing on, you, candy. you go scare, you know, but then, you know, like, you know, maybe you worry that Michael Myers, or Halloween, Michael Myers might pop up and get you, but other than that, you know, but, but then you get people to tell you, like, if you're out chicken treat, don't eat the food, because the people are putting spells on food, they're, like, introducing evil into you, like, like I mean, there's a lot to think about, like, if, if you listen, but is it a lot of people just talking crazy shit in the world, and yeah. feeding just as much crazy in your mind as people trying to feed good in your mind, you know, I, what do I, what do you think? I'm at a crossroads. I, I don't know. I used to love Halloween, one of my favorite holidays. Now I go, I don't, I don't know. Like I have like throughout uh, the last ten years, slowly stopped celebrating Halloween. I haven't been, you know, I mean, I dress as a vampire <laughs> weekly, <laughs> but but in a sense, I haven't been to Halloween parties. I used to throw Halloween parties. I haven't. Uh, I used to uh, hand out candy to the kids and dress up, and play spooky music, and all that. It, it, big part of that. But the, I don't know. Slowly drifted away from all that, and I don't. I don't know why. I I never thought of this, but why did I slowly drift away from it? I don't know. Um, I have slowly pulled myself away from it being my favorite holiday, you know. And, and I'm nothing against like Friday the Thirteenth and Halloween. I've never thought against it, but then, but lately, I've been at this crossroads, and I've been thinking like, what? What? Am I, what is going on here? Are we celebrating? Yeah. Is Halloween a celebration of, of evil? Are, are we? Are, is there a big? smoke and mirrors thing going on here or or what you know what do you think 
No, I, I, I definitely agree. Because, like, for example, in the Dominican Republic, they're huge on, obviously, like, religion and stuff like that. We don't celebrate Halloween. That's, like, not a... It's not a It's thing. not a holiday there. Yeah, but, no. I mean, it, now it's been, you know, more, like... Like, people do it, and they'll have, like, Halloween parties and stuff like that, but trick-or-treating is not a thing there. Like, yeah. it never was when I was growing up, like, ever. Well, see, I might might, might be naive. naive. <clears throat> so when I think Dominican so. Republic and, and your horse's hair getting braided, I start thinking this country, <laughs> and I'm not going to walk five miles house to house to trick-or-treat, you know? No, I mean, we, we <laughs> like, have, you know, like, I mean, even, like, the capital looks like places even better than in, like, Florida. Like, there's some places in, like, Miami that I'm like, am I in, like, a third world country right now? Yeah. Where you're like, what the heck? No, it's, it's pretty civilized um it is a developing country but yeah you still have the countryside where you do have to walk like five miles over to the next ranch I mean, or house or something what other like holiday can you walk up to a stranger's house and take who would take candy and food from a stranger that's literally like, what they tell any you given go, day and then you go out your trick or treat you know? smile my feet give me something good to eat, you know um and a stranger who who knows who this person is it could have put like the Appalachians magic on it. It could a witch could have put a spell, or it could be put it in there. It could have put a drop of their blood in there, uh, or something, I mean, or something, doing, or something. They like. were doing stuff like that. And then that. you go home and eat that. You consume that. And like, yeah, Halloween's great, and my tummy's upset. I've eaten so much. And I did that. Uh, I love yeah, trick or treating. I, mean, I, I had sacks and pillowcases. When I like, first moved to the U.S., I'm like, what the hell is this? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah let's go Free right candy. Or... Let's do it. So like, I mean, <laughs> does that even make sense? And then, then I know they've tried to make Halloween's that we would hear about the razor blade and needles and I, apples I've heard, and stuff yeah. like that but then they try to make it ho- uh, safer with uh block parties or or even wrestling shows i've i've done wrestling shows for halloween just to bring the community in to put them in a place instead of out chicken treat and have them come into mm-hmm. a safer environment and watch an event instead of uh go house to house getting candies but like um but i wasn't thinking halloween was i celebrating it the the devil or evil or in any sense on halloween but basically that's what you're really doing aren't you yeah, I mean, if you if you really think about it, and then like worshiping like dead spirits and stuff like that, it's kind of so. Scary. Are you opening? Like, are you like welcoming them them into your <laughs> life like a Ouija board? Yeah, I wouldn't. I never play Ouija. Like I, I, refuse, I don't mess with Ouija. I, I've never. I, I refuse, touched one one I've time. I've seen but so many stories, and yeah. I believe in it. I mean, because if you believe in good, so if you believe in God and you believe in like greater spirits, like you have to believe that there's bad. Like you can't have good well, without bad. You had bad. the El Guapo lady come braid the hair. <laughs> Si <laughs> she said something to me the other day and I sent a picture of his horse head sideways and said, don't you go braid in my head. <laughs> no, I was like, oh my God, I would never. I mean, if I was to be like, a, you know, some kind of spirit or something spooky, I would definitely be the Siwapa. So I could have like long, luxurious hair, walk mm. backwards, braid ah. hair. So, uh, <laughs> so uh, do I believe in spirits, ghosts, and other supernatural beings? Yes, I do. <laughs> I've, I've spoken percent. many times. Like this morning, <laughs> I, I promise you. I, maybe I just had an overactive imagination. I didn't sleep much last night. I tossed and turned. I couldn't sleep. Uh, maybe the alpha brain is just uh, making you see no, things you've never seen No, the alpha brain was like three days ago. <laughs> it was like, or however many days ago. That was Sunday. Like, uh, today's Thursday. Like, four oh, days geez. ago. So, uh no, oh, but I was really spooked out. But I've seen things. I've told you the story about in England, the, whole, uh, the yeah. one room, you know. Uh, yeah. Uh, there was a place yeah. in uh, Ireland. Uh, it's, it's a true story. It's all these older places, it, it seems like. It was like the, the, it was this big, big festival hall like in the hotel. And so stuff. We, we walk up to it, and the other wrestlers there. I think uh, one big Peter was there, and there was another guy named Lee. And I can't remember who the other guys are there. I don't, I don't think Frankie Sloan was there. But, but Big Pete was there, and I, and I know Lee because Lee took the room, and they were like, we were standing outside the place, and um, I said, I'm not going in there. You go, why not? I go, bro, there's something bad going on here. I got a real, I was outside of the place. I said, I got a really bad feeling. I don't want to go in here. And, you know, they're like, come on, man. And then we, they open up the door. What's the first thing you see? A huge Bible open up. I go, oh, bro, they don't have that big Bible there for no reason. <laughs> like, oh, my God. And he's like, I'll oh, stop it, big, big Peter. He's like, stop it. No, they're gone. And, and because I had wrestled longer, you have seniority, right? So you can pick the bigger room, right? So like if you were the driver, if you're driving the car, you get a choice too first because you're doing all the driving. So uh, you could pick a nice. bigger room, have room choice. If you have seniority over there, they kind of do it like that. You could pick the bigger room. Like, oh, you have this room. Big, huge room. I opened the door of that room. I said, oh, hell no. I am not staying in this room. Really nice room. I said, I am not staying in this room. And uh, we are walking around. We went downstairs and, and Big Pete, he's like six, 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 eight. I don't know. He's a big muscular guy, right? Um, 
it's this little tiny room, like little tiny, like a closet. Like, can I stay in here with you? He's like, you want to stay in here with me? I go, yeah, yeah. I do. So uh, the nighttime came. Uh, they were walking around. There was an Irish dance festival going on. Like they were doing Irish dance, you know, and yeah. stuff. And I was walking around. I go, man, I'm going. I'm going back to the room. I didn't feel comfortable anywhere on that on that that the grounds of this place. So I go down to that room, and then I swear that I could see orbs and stuff moving and lights coming in and out the windows and stuff and i'm like i'm down there like just tripping it big pete comes in and uh hey buddy you know he talks like hey little buddy and hey big buddy (laughs) you're like yeah i'm just trying to sleep so he takes something to sleep he takes some kind of sleeping medicine so about the time he's like this is a big ass giant sleeping you know he's he's not quiet farting and snoring (laughs) and you know (laughs) in his little room but i'm like the heck with it. It's better be to deal with him than, than, than out there with them, you know. And because uh, I felt safe in that room, uh, but everything around me just felt bad. The whole place felt bad. But that whatever reason, that room felt safe, and that's the room I wanted to sleep. And I could just hear weird noises and stuff. And then next thing you know, you hear this like blood curdling scream, Wah! and it was the dude Lee. Uh, and then after you hear that, right. All, all you hear at the door is like boom, 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 and uh, Lee, Lee has that Bible. He has the Bible. <laughs> he goes, "Can I come stay in here with you guys?" He never wanted to talk about what happened in that room. I wouldn't take. He never wanted to talk about it. But he slept. This room was tiny. Like, like, like the beds were uh, closer than me and you. Like the beds, and there was this little yeah. area, and our luggage was in there. It was really little, and the luggage just stacked there. So he just climbed in over. And slept in between us. So it was like three dudes, like like pretty much spooning each other. Either way, you spooned, you got some kind of penis or butt in your oh, face. Oh God! You know what I mean? So like, I'm like, like and and you try to. I went the other way because there was snoring. He was snoring down that way, so I turned that way. So I had feet in my face. So oh like, my you God! Know. Um, well, yeah, t- terrifying. Yeah, so I I do believe it's spirits. This morning, I don't know if that was my imagination getting the better of me. Uh, but I don't know why the dog was looking at it. I'm like, what are you looking at? I thought the dog was giving me the business watching it do the boot scoot boogie across there. Yeah. And then, uh, but it was looking over me. And when I turned around, it was that shadow right there, like long, like a person. It was zoom, gone. I was like, whoa. And I look around and I see my shadow over there. I go, was that my own? Did I see my own shadow? But it was way behind me, you know, the way the light was hitting. Yeah. And uh, man, I, and the dog was just looking. <laughs> I was like, at the dog and we just kind of motored on inside, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like, oh my God. So yeah, I totally believe in all that. But I, I do question about celebrating Halloween. It was my it was my absolute favorite holiday. Now I'm like really at a crossroads on whether. Yeah. Uh, not because the church says this or this or that. It's just. I believe in God. I can tell you stories all day long why I believe in God. Uh, but I, I just don't know. I, this is something that's been weighing heavy on me, and it's creeping into me, and, 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 and I don't it know. Happens. These are questions that's I'm fine. asking. And that's totally fine, you know? Yeah, uh, so... Uh, what do you, th- you, you, you? I asked you what you thought, right? I just started yeah. rambling. Though, what no, you're, you're good. I, I, I'm on the same boat as you are because it's like you know. Yeah, because you said Dominican big, Republic, you didn't. Yeah, celebrate. we don't celebrate it. So it's like when I came here, I was like, oh, but I didn't really know where it even came from. But I mean, if you really think about it, there's like. I mean, look, Raymond. I guess Raymond. <laughs> uh, you know, <laughs> yeah, Raymond <laughs> celebrates Halloween, obviously. No, he definitely. I mean, but it's cool it. things like the jack o' lanterns <laughs> with the the candles and this car. But look at how scary they are. and um. And if you notice, most horror movies are around Halloween or yeah. something, you know, or Friday the 13th, you know, the most traditional ones. Or there's like know. another one coming out. It's like called Thanksgiving. And I saw the trailer and I was <laughs> like, I was like, what the hell? Was Thanksgiving's a horror movie? Oh my God. It was or like was this like guy like hunting Na- people down and then they like, is he like Native throw American people in like or a, something? Like no, something. it has like that, a mask, kind of no, looks like the, Ven, Ven, what is it, Vendetta or whatever? Vendetta, V for Vendetta. Kinda, like, yeah, yeah. kind of oh, looks like, the mask kind of looks like it. Like Yeah, exactly. Crazy. Um, oh, we have another one. October. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, October is Depression all right. Awareness Month. <laughs> okay, so we'll get off all that spooky. Uh, whatever we were going with Halloween. Because yeah. now I feel like I got a weird feeling in my stomach. I don't know. I like this thing's going on. So. Are you hungry? Um, <laughs> That's the feeling I have in no, my stomach. Could be that. I, I need to I eat. <laughs> got to go to the airport and spend $40 on an Uber in a little while. <laughs> the oh, cheapness in me kicking in. 40 50 bucks for an Uber. <laughs> oh, I'll take, I'll take. No, it's all right. It's good. It's, <laughs> I, it's, I appreciate like... it. No, I, I'm used to it, man. I, I just sit there and just stare at the back of the Uber guy's head and like, God, am I going <laughs> to tip this guy or not? Pill Polly talks to me. So, like, no, Uber's a very interesting trip, you know. Uber, uh, yeah, you never know. I've had some crazy drivers, and I'm like, 
They're telling me their whole life story. I'm like, oh. I, I'm just I'm blessed that I understand some Spanish, or I would never know what's going on. My whole <laughs> kind of like, oh, like the area to, you're in, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, and, and, um, but this the Spanish, uh, the Cuban ones, they get you there though. Like, you, they people knock the Cuban guy, people and say, oh, they drive slow, the dump trucks, this and that. Not the Uber drivers. They're like, whoo, we're gonna mess around, man. They're like, they're like, I'm like thinking, hey, bro, we're not an island. You're like, like midair when there's like yeah. speed bumps. Just... It'd be like, I gotta go to the street, me all. Like, all right, like, cause he just jumps off the interstate, starts taking back streets. Literally. I'm like, whatever, oh dude. Like, I, <laughs> like, they're like, I don't know. I already agreed that Uber price that was there. So however we get there, you take, you want to beat your car up and Duke's a hazard over speed bumps and like, whatever. Um, go ahead. But there's some crazy ass Uber drivers out there. Yeah. There's this new app though, InDrive. Have you seen that one yet? No, I used So Uber drivers are picking me up and they're smarting me up about that. I don't know if they're trying to hustle me or not. They go, hey, check out InDrive. It's it's cheaper. It's half the, like less the price of Uber. But the the drivers apparently get more oh. money than what they do from Uber. Like, but then they can also cancel you too. Like, he, they did say that. And we can cancel what rides we don't want. You know, I'm like, oh, well, that's not cool if you don't want a $5 ride. And I'm in the rain trying to get home. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. So basically, tell me if I'm doing InDrive, I'll be standing there for like hours in the rain. You know, so like, yeah. So I, I basically, I guess you, if you want the the short trip, you call Uber, and then if you got to take a decently long trip, it'll be cheaper. I'm on already drive. scared of just being by myself in an Uber. Uh, I mean, well, because you don't know, your guy may pull up, your stalker dude pull up. And, you know. Jesus. If he's that dialed in, I don't, don't give him ideas. <laughs> Raymond, cut this out. <laughs> cut this out. <laughs> don't give him ideas. Well, I know, I know people. Man. Jeez. All right, so October <laughs> is Depression Awareness Month, along with also Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a few other things too in October. October is a heavy month with uh, uh, different stuff, awarenesses yeah. and stuff like that. But we're, we're going to talk depression now. So aside from Halloween and Sam Ham, October also represents Depression Awareness Month. Gangrel, yes, uh, you are a huge advocate for mental health, yes, and seems like an issue you're always passionate about and discussing. You always, oh, oh you're supposed to be reading. This. Yeah, I was like, yeah, I'll let you read it. You always preach the importance of being mindful of how we treat others and speak to one another because you never know what the person may be going through and your words could be the difference between someone smiling or someone hurting themselves so questions a couple questions here what made you passionate about speaking on issues caused by mental health uh okay you know uh, rewind back to some of that and i and you know sometimes i don't practice what i preach you know i say (laughs) always importance of being mindful how you treat and speak to one another as a teacher sometimes i get very frustrated and i got to remind myself like um that i don't know what this guy's going through there might be a reason that or this young lady's going through like uh having a bad day or maybe something's going on with their family and uh, mm-hmm. maybe things are just not adding up in their head. So, but I get very frustrated and, and I've been trying to rewind myself and check my ass, you know, <laughs> like, cause I've been like at the point like, ah, I'm going to kill somebody. And uh, sometimes I think I, that's why, I, like when I took Monday off, even though I was tired, I think it was good. Uh, yeah. A reset for me. Uh, and I came in Tuesday and Wednesday and had very successful classes. I think like uh, Tuesday, I don't think, did I yell Tuesday? You were there Tuesday. A little bit. Did I? Uh, you, well, Wednesday you, I did. You stopped yourself. You stopped yourself. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, I'm aware of that. But, uh, you were definitely way more patient, especially when we were yeah, crisscrossing. You know, like. and <laughs> just because I'm going through stuff or I'm tired or I'm burnt out or I feel frustrated for certain situations, that doesn't mean everybody has a different story. Everybody's on a different path. And everybody's mind is connected in different ways. So, yes, we, you got to be... Uh, very careful how you speak to people because uh, one wrong word could break somebody. If, yeah. if they're on the edge of jumping off the cliff you know you go over there you you know you just push them right off or or you can share a smile and, and reel them right back in you know get them a step away from that cliff and step back towards the right direction um you know i believe a passion about it just because in the wrestling industry uh it started when i was 17 um i've seen so much mental health problems so much depression i i lived with somebody for eight, i was with some with somebody for 18 years that schizophrenia i was bipolar and uh, and I truly saw that how this person well, it was Luna, how how she thought and felt was not of her control. It was out of her control. It it was not you know it was her choice not to take her medicines that would like reel her out and put her way out there on a the deep end. And then it was also her choice to drink while she was on her medicines, which caused a lot of problems. But the problems in itself, like how she felt the the, the, the despair of depression and wanting to hurt herself and or or the swings of anger and different things, that was not controllable. And, and it's very sad. And, and I, you see it with um, a lot of the other wrestlers. If you if you look at the, the early um, 
uh, death, the, the ages of wrestlers, uh, a lot of it is self, like it's suicide yeah. or suicide by drugs. Just they just just they just or alcohol to the point, you know, they, they, they know what they're doing. They're just trying to kill themselves. You don't know what to do. You uh, you wrestle your whole life. You come up in a different era, in a different generation, and everything just changes. You know, social media. Uh, pay-per-view all the uh, wrestling totally does like a 360 and and, and you're left out in the cold like all, all of a sudden something you knew you can move from town to town and do <clears throat> as a regular job you're obsolete you know i don't know what do you do you you've been doing it since you're 17 what do you what do you do when they tell you we don't need you <laughs> you know things have changed younger faster pussycats you know what i mean mm -hmm. you know younger studs you know or women beautiful you know whatever the situation is you're just obsolete we don't need you you don't fit that program but you did for all those years then what do you do and then if you if you have any type of bipolar or any kind of mental health issues it's, a, it's super triple it kicks in and, and you mm -hmm. see it a lot in wrestling so you see a lot of suicide and and, and, and slow deaths due to alcohol and drugs and stuff like that. So that, that's why I care so much about it. And it's not something people can control. And, and you know, somebody might be jokingly say, yeah, you know, I just feel like killing myself. If they said that out loud, they're probably not joking. It probably is a feeling they actually have. And you got to take that seriously. And, and um, you know, whatever way you feel is the safest way to reach out to them or try to connect or even... Go around them and maybe go to somebody they know and say, "Hey, maybe this person's feeling a certain way. You know, maybe you should, if you're able to talk to them, talk to them, or, or, or whatever you got to do to connect or some, find somebody else that can connect with them because uh, it's out there. It, it, it's it doesn't matter how old you are. Uh, you know, it doesn't it doesn't discriminate uh, race, um, religion, like whatever. It doesn't. It, and it, it's it's a scary thing and uh, it's a serious thing and and people need to know they can, there's, they can talk to somebody. There's hotlines out there, different things. And, and uh, yeah, yeah, I'm very passionate about it because I've seen and lost so many people around me and yeah. seen them deal with it. And then, and then that just, you know, with depression and stuff, like with concussions and wrestlers, I've seen people change after, like, bad headshots or different things, you know, and, and, and their brain just kind of reset in a different way and they become a different person. And, uh they wake up feeling a different way. They act in a different way. Their moods totally changed. Um, why concussed or after a bad concussion? And so there's a lot of things that way too that, that affects mental health and from from your job choice, you know, and, and the, the stuff that happens. Doesn't take much to, uh, I seen it yesterday, was teaching double underhooks, butterfly suplexes, and now they're all doing suplex. Missed a good class. You would have done that. You, I think you would enjoy that. I'm going to start coming Wednesdays um, again. So like, <laughs> like, <laughs> what's a smaller a class stuff. so I can get in there and control the environment a little bit better? Uh, it was a better, hmm. I could control Listen, the environment better. Uh, so we're doing double underhook suplexes. There was a couple of times I've seen people like, ooh, that was close landing on the back of the neck or the head. You know, it doesn't take much to, to ding you and, you know, so... Uh, what we do is, is is very dangerous and and very people over I don't think people really appreciate how much we do put our body on the line but but also our, our, our brain just like football players you know they make all these rules to protect quarterbacks and they're trying to protect things here and Russ is the same way they've stopped chair shots in the major companies but still out there in the independence and all these death match things you still see a lot of chair shots and different things and uh you know, and, and um, that'll all affect you mentally in some type of way. So um, no, you got to be, we, we do, we need to be kind. We need to uh, share a smile more than a bad word, you know, <laughs> or, or scowl. You know, it's easier to smile than frown, uh, say hello and stuff like that. And there's depression hotlines out there, 866-903-3787 is one, suicide, uh, suicide crisis and uh, lifeline dial 988, right? So... Um, I see that at the bottom of the screen. I'm glad Raymond put that there. Hopefully, it'll be up in the um, yeah. things at the end of the show, too. He's usually really good at doing that. But um, what else you want to ask me? What else does it say? Um, so this is a personal question. How has your mental health affected you and your life, and how are you able to overcome those challenges? My mental health? I, I <laughs> like uh, uh, one time, one time I thought there was something seriously wrong with me. I... I, I um, I couldn't breathe. I couldn't walk from like uh, I was living in an apartment. I couldn't walk from the apartment to the uh, elevator without oh, like 
just feeling drained. I felt like semen. Yeah. I felt heavy. So I went to a doctor's office. And much like the doctors always tell me when I get checked <clears> up, <throat> oh, man, you, no, you're in the best shape of anybody we've been in here. Your, your blood's yeah. good. I go, no, I'm just I'm just so weak and tired. And, and then they, 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 uh, they asked me, I so how's your mental health? Uh, how are you? And I was like, huh? And I was like, oh. Uh, and I scooted out of it all of a sudden. I felt good again. <laughs> like, yeah. I, I realized my mental health affected totally how I felt. Like, um, so I do 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 battle. Like I do regularly, but I, I'm aware of it. Like I don't know why that point stood out to me because I think because I watched Luna get locked up and Baker active for like whatever the three days, seventy two hours or whatever it is, and I thought, oh shit, they're getting ready to Baker act me. Okay. Like so, I was like, boom. I'm very aware. Uh, of, of uh, my lows and, and where I'm going. I can feel it. I know it's there, but I'm not afraid of it because I know I've always pulled out of it. I knew it was always just temporary for me. Where other people, it's not just temporary. Uh, for me, I knew it was just, I don't know why. It, it just comes. I feel it. I've accepted. I go, okay, yep. Yeah. Well, this is going to pass. You just got to stay positive step by step, breath by breath, minute by minute, and, and you're going to get through it. And, and and I do. I always do. Um, so... I, I'm blessed with knowing that I can get through it where other people, I don't think they know that they can get through it or they can't get through it. It's just more overwhelming to whatever my situation is. Now, if you think I'm crazy as hell, yeah, I'm crazy. <laughs> like, yeah. You know, Mental health wise, you know, depression, all that, yeah, that, but the thoughts I have in my head are insane. I, I would be locked up for the thoughts I have and go oh, through gosh. my mind. Like, I think I would be criminally insane. Like, I, thank God I have power over my <laughs> impulsive thought and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, so I don't even know that, but on the lighter side, yeah, I'm crazy as hell. But <laughs> but depression does come. I know I can get through it. It, it, it it's it's it, that one moment. I don't know whatever. Whenever the doctor said that, it just triggered me. I'm like, wait a minute, they're getting ready to lock me, and I realized, wait, and I was fine. I, I kicked out, and then I knew that I would pull out of it. So when it comes, and it does come, I, I'll I'll sit there and go, oh man, I, I feel it sliding in. I feel it coming. I felt it coming in a month ago, or like two weeks ago, or a month ago. Right when fall, it was rainy when it was that last, yeah, a couple of weeks ago when it was really rainy, and I, I felt it <clears throat> coming, and I, and I get like, well, I'm going to quit wrestling in my head. I'm gonna, I am don't want to do this. What am I going to do with my life? I don't want to teach the school anymore. I'm tired of traveling. <laughs> and go, but at the same time, I know it's temporary for me. That I just got to like just keep pushing positive things forward, not dwell on that, not, not just like, okay, that's just how I feel at this minute, but I'm going to keep pushing. And I do it, and and I, I do mean it's minute by minute. Sometimes it's just second by second, but but it's minute by minute, step by step, breath by breath. I just keep moving forward, and eventually it clears out for me. But other people don't have that that benefit and it, or, or that understanding, or, or they have a, they don't have that choice at all. Like their their mental illness is is, is a lot deeper than whatever mine is, yeah. you know, or whatever brings mine on. I have no idea if it's a seasonal thing or. A, a memory thing of maybe my mom, you know, uh, passing away or losing my dad, you know, in, or my, my younger, whatever brings it on. There's something that sits down in there and brings it on to me. But I also quite aware that I will ride it out just like yeah. a hurricane or anything else. I know it'll pass and there's a sunny, sunny day coming behind, you know, so. So that's how I, that's how I do it. That's what goes on with me. So I'm not immune to it, but I, but I understand mine a little bit better. I, I'm, I'm not afraid of it. I, I just, I embrace it and I do what I can do to get through it. And, and I can't relate to that. Um, so this is a follow-up question with what you're just touching on. So can you speak about a time you felt like giving up and how that moment affected your mindset going forward? Oh, there's been like, it's been like, uh, it was so many different times, you know, uh, <laughs> Which one out of all of those is just one you can remember because it was like just that big? Well, that, that I just explained that one yeah. was one that made me realize, wait a minute, like, <laughs> what do you mean what's wrong with my mental health? Then I, I realized that, 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 the depression, that the depression affected me to the point that I couldn't move or breathe and I could, was convinced that it was horribly ill. But, but, was... but there's so many other times yeah. that there was times that I've actually tried to take my life. I was going to take my life. Um, uh, <laughs> there was one uh, we even have time oh we gotta run out well, I don't have to come back to it but <laughs> I got a little cliffhanger but yeah there's been a lot of a lot of uh, there's a lot of different times but um, uh, that one was where I, I moved forward and realized that was a clarity moment that I go yeah. uh, like because I was able to like when he said that to me whatever triggered it like instantly I was like 
able to breathe again like that week and move forward and it felt better that affected me in that way but there, there's been i never really i guess it's wrong of me to say i have control of it but i, I it just doesn't scare me anymore and, and 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 i'm confident that if i stay positive it'll pass you know so that's good yeah <laughs> we appreciate that well we're all happy that you're here and continue you know yeah. helping all of us and i know you you check on on people and and you i you know sometimes i'll be like having a day and i'll yeah. randomly get a hey I've positive learned, vibes i'm like i needed that i I've, appreciate that i've so. learned to trust my 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 gut or my instinct and feelings and stuff if somebody flashes through my head a lot like whatever reason i'll be like why am i thinking about I'll, I'll just send him a message well or there stuff is like a that. saying that's like if you think about some someone specifically that's god's way of telling you that you need to reach out to them no, there you go. i have seen that before so i always worry i think i'm being a weirdo <laughs> like, <laughs> no 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 but uh on it, that it's note it's appreciated because you, you never know if you're the only person doing that you know like yeah. sometimes you know everyone's like so focused on what you can do for them and where you need to be and you need to do this and you need to do that that people do forget to ask you sometimes like hey how are you like how's you <laughs> as a person doing you know so it does help a lot to have fang and a bang and baby all the time speaking of fang and a bang <laughs> and that was episode 83 of fang and a bang hey it ended on such a serious little note but but, uh, but, it, but, it's but depression is a serious it's important uh, yeah. thing and it's very important and again you know you could dial the hotline one of the numbers is 866-903-3787 suicide and crisis lifetime dial 988 um, 988 it's a very easy number 988 uh, so um well, cool but thank you for coming in again today um, I, i'm sorry that i gotta rush out of here guys but i, I do got another uh, flight i do gotta get to <laughs> san diego i gotta go home and uh uh, go check on that dog and make sure there's nothing else weird going on around there. <laughs> and then uh, <laughs> grab my bags and head out to MIA, Miami International. So, um, Safe travels. Uh, thank you. So want some? Get some. Bad enough? Take some. Uh, thank you for joining us for episode 80 of Fang of the Bay with Gangrel, Nikki B, and Raymond over in the third corner. Thank you.